Praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, Praise the Lord. We well, thank the Lord for bringing us to this Ministers and Professional Conference. And we're dealing with something special, something very important for everyone. And at this time, something very important for the church. The church in our country here. The church in the continent of Africa. And the church beyond. And I pray that the Lord will open our ears, our minds, our hearts to get everything He's sending to us. The church needs revival. You need revival. The world is also having revival of their own at present. And if we don't wake up, to have the revival that will counter the revival of the world, the church will be swallowed up. That's why we're coming at this time all over the world in our minister's professional conference to have the long-awaited revival in the last days. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your plan, for your purpose, for your promise, for the performance of your word. We're asking, O oh Lord, that you open the heart of the church, the church in the world, the church in every continent, the church in our country here, that there will be a revival, a restoration of the good old days of the church in Jesus' name. Wake us up. Keep us awakening that we will be part of the revival of the last days. Confirm your word even today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. The revival we're talking about these four days. Today, tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday is a long awaited revival. That is the revival we've been waiting for. Number one, personal revival. Number two, the prophesied revival. Number three, the promised revival. Number four, the pertinent present day revival. What is revival? When something good has taken place in the past, and that thing has gone down, almost dead. The revival means the bringing back, the restoration of what we had in the past. At the time of Moses, there was a great revival of the manifestation of the power of God that swallowed up the revival and the power of the world. At the time of Joshua, there was an unprecedented manifestation of the power and the promise of God. The presence of God was known everywhere. When you come to the judges, all that died down. 
revival means a restoration of the presence, the power, and the performance of the Lord, like in the time of Joshua. When Elijah came, Elijah brought the revival of the power, the fire of God from on high. And then eventually Elisha came. After Elisha, all that died down. And so revival means we're looking for the days of Elijah and Elisha again. Everything is cool, everything is cold, everything is lukewarm and lethargic. And we're praying that the long-awaited revival that started with a man, Elijah, and all over the nation, the God of power, the God of fire was known again. That's the revival we're waiting for. When the church will not be asleep, when the church will not be trampled under by the powers that be, And then, at the time of Ezekiel, the power that came, the revival, the life that came, all that now has gone down. Revival means we are bringing back the good old days. That every heart will be on fire. Every church will be on fire. And the glory of the Lord will come back again. Look at Christ. On the streets of Nazareth. And Capernaum. And everywhere. Look at power overflowing. Look at transformed lives. Look at healed bodies. Look at the racing of the dead. That time it passed on to the apostles. Look at the apostles walking. And look at the great power manifested. Look at Peter just walking by. And a shadow fell on the people that had problems. Without a word. Just the shadow. Coming upon the people that were seen. And they were healed. And the multitudes came to the Lord. And eventually the time of the apostles. We came to a time of the Laodicean church. Rich in material things. Great in buildings. But the power of God had waned and gone down. And from century to century, the dark ages took over. And the time in which we live, there is churchianity, but less of Christianity. There is religion, but less of righteousness. And we're praying that the long-awaited revival will come back again. The time of Christ. The time he promised. The time he prophesied. At the time all the scriptures gave us prophecy that that time of old will come back again. That is why we're here. That revival will come. A time of restoration, a time of power manifestation, a power that in Elijah will rise up in every, in every nation, in every state, in every division of a nation. Elijah here, Elisha there, one Joshua there, one Moses over there, and all of a sudden, once again, the fire will burn.
so all these four sessions we're going to be devoting time for that revival to start with you to continue with your church and tend to sweep the whole land that once again the world will see that our god is still alive Today, I'm starting with the message, the master key of faith in the latter day revival. The master key of faith. That if you are going to have that long, long awaited revival, if we are going to have that long awaited revival, primarily, purposefully, and First, there must be the master key of faith that opens every door before you. Actually, Christ himself asked the question. In Luke chapter 18, verse 8, it says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. They will have the assurance that if the church will rise up and the church will pray that the God of heaven, the God of all power, and the God of great performance, that he will answer us speedily. Then he asked a question. He said, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, when is he coming? At the last time, the last days. Many things will have gone on. And then at the end of prophetic events, Christ will come. And in those latter days, at the last time, when he will come, shall he find faith on the earth? Shall he find money in the churches? Shall he find artists in the churches? Shall he find politics in the churches? Shall he find lukewarmness in the churches? But, but, but. The thing that matters, that he wants to find when he comes on the last, at the last day, the thing that matters, that he wants to find, is faith. Shall he find faith on the earth? If there is anything that will bring the latter day revival, it is the faith we have in God more faith less fear more faith less panicking more faith less despondency the church is filled with lukewarmness the church is filled with fear we fear them there we fear them here there is fear that pervades every life. And as long as you have fear, your faith is going to be at the bottom. He doesn't want to find fear. Can you imagine Moses running away from the magicians because of fear? Can you, can you imagine Joshua running away because of the Canaanites? Can you imagine Ezekiel, Elijah running away from Ahab and all the people because of fear? When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? It's not just talking about our country here or the country there 
or the country over there on the earth faith dynamic faith faith heart shaking faith faith sickness healing faith faith demon chasing faith faith powerful irresistible faith shall we find faith on the earth look at it look at ephesians chapter 6 and i'm reading from verse 16 above all taking the shield of faith in these last days above all beyond all whatever you have whatever you possess whatever you have ownership of above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked that is what we need today to have the long awaited revival that the same passion the same pursuit the same energy the same vision we have had in having many other things we consecrate and concentrate and commit that to having the faith that is needed in the latter days the master key of faith in the latter day revival the three things we're looking at number one obtaining the all-sufficient faith for all solutions number two operating in abraham's faith that will not stagger Number three, obeying through abiding faith without stumbling. Obtain, operate, obey. Obtain. You need to possess, obtain first. Before you can operate in that kind of faith, obtain, operate, and then obey. The obedience we are talking about is not the normal, regular, everyday obedience. Moses, stretch your rod out and divide the sea that's not the regular day-to-day -day obedience that's a kind of special obedience <laughs> joshua look at the sun stop that sun and you obey it that's the kind of obedience we're talking about it, it, the, the obedience of revival is the obedience that does the extraordinary so that you can have the extraordinary my lord are you that one on the water walking yes if you are the one tell me to come come yes. obedience to that to get out of the boat and then walk on the sea that's the kind of obedience we're talking about now go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature no aeroplane no car no radio no television, no social media. 
go into all the world and they went. That's the kind of obedience we are talking about in these latter days. You obtain the faith. You operate in the faith. And you obey through faith. Revival will come. You have to abandon what you are used to in the past. You have to even look away from what you have done in the past by the regular faith. And then you rise up with a mind ready to obey. A mind ready to do. A mind ready to experience something new you had never experienced before. I'm following on the word now. Obtain. Receive. Possess. And it is that first step that gets you on the road to revival. Point number one then. Obtaining the all-sufficient faith for all solutions. Every significant person in the kingdom. That's how they started. They had to obtain. And it was the faith they obtained that made them obtain all the other things they ought to have. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 4. Hebrews 11. We're looking at verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained. By faith, he obtained what Cain could not obtain. Cain was older. Cain was intelligent. Cain even invented killing that nobody had done before him. But he did not obtain faith. The faith for righteousness. The faith for penetration. Faith for opening the windows of heaven and for heaven to respond unto him. Faith to be the first one that obtained righteousness and redemption by faith. We need to obtain that faith. The faith that spearhead something that had never been had before. The faith that receives something new that nobody before him had ever received. The faith to concentrate on God. That whatever Cain did and whatever Cain did not do, here I am, I obtain the faith that accomplishes. By faith, if Abel offered unto God, he gave unto God an acceptable, excellent sacrifice than Cain. Than Cain. Cain was religious. He also offered something, but it was by works, the works of his hand. The faith that goes beyond humanity. The faith that says, I didn't see this in my neighbors. I didn't see all this around me. But I have the faith, the faith that obtained something extraordinary that nobody else has obtained. The faith. And he said it is by that faith that he was 
counted righteous. God testifying of his gifts. And by it being dead, yet speaketh. Hey, look at that same chapter, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms. The kingdoms now subdues everybody. The kingdoms of the world subdues the preachers, the churches, because what they are, we don't have. But now we'll take the faith that subdues kingdoms. That the world will not have the final say, but the people of faith, they will have the final say. And the Lord's righteousness, the faith that brings out righteousness we've never seen before. What they say that that denomination is for holiness. Because we don't want to have the faith that brings up righteousness. But the faith we obtain that brings down the long-awaited revival. is the faith that says, even if nobody else is righteous, I will have the righteousness of faith. Look at that verse 33. Obtain promises. The promises that other people do not have. The promises they cannot activate in their lives. Notice my word, activate. Sometimes you have a phone in your hand. The battery is dead. And so you cannot use it. The phone is still there. The SIM card is still there. All the various things stored in, they're still there. But it takes electric power to charge that phone and to reactivate everything that is dead, dull, and dormant there. That's, that's what faith does. That everything inside us, dead, dull, dormant, that the faith will come and activate everything. And then we're able to obtain the promises. And then stop the mouths of lions. That's the faith. The faith they had in the past. They had God, we have God. They had Christ, we have Christ. They had the Holy Spirit, we have the Holy Spirit. But we need the faith to activate everything we have. And that is why we are here. That you and I obtain the faith. The faith that will work righteousness. The faith that even the kingdoms of this world, they will ask us, what do we do? How do we go? How do we operate? That they want a word from the church to be able to operate and to be able to do what they ought to do. A look at Hebrews chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 12. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12 it says that she be not slothful. We're very much slothful. We're slothful in prayer. We're slothful in reading the word. We're, we're slothful in recalling the history of the church. 
were slothful in running for the Lord. We try to kind of use our energy sparingly for the Lord. We're slothful in consecration and commitment. We're slothful in surrendering all and laying all on the altar of his sacrifice. We're not passionate. We're not purposeful. We're not zealous. We're not on fire. When we go on the football field, see energy. When we're looking and watching for the games, see energy at the stadium. When we come to church, when we come to preach, when we come to run for God, when we come to do something spiritual, the energy goes down. But if we will not be slothful, if we will come to the Lord with fresh energy and fresh purpose, revival will come. If we can bring the energy from the football field and bring it to the church, if we can bring the energy and the zeal and the passion we have in the market and bring that back to the church. And we're no more slothful, but followers of them who through faith and perseverance inherit the promises. Then he tells us in the next verse, he says, For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could not swear by no greater, he swore by himself. And then in verse 14, saying, Surely, 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 blessing, I will bless thee. And multiplying, I will multiply thee. Abraham looked away from every other thing between him and the most high God. He looked away from what story his body was telling him. He looked away from the deadness of Sarah's womb. He looked away from everything he had known in history. He looked away from all the comments and the whatever they were saying all around him. And he looked unto God. He cleared the air between him and the almighty God. And God said, surely, certainly, assuredly. And then any other thing that brought doubt or brought uh, argument or discussion in the heart, he looked away from everything. This long-awaited revival will come. When you block your ears to every other thing in the world. This long-awaited revival will come. When you do not see, you do not perceive, you do not think, you do not meditate on anything around you, and you look to the God of heaven, the Most High, who gave the promise, and he says, surely this is what you will do. And then in verse 15, and so after he had patiently endured he obtained consistently and constantly he was looking at the one who had promised you will see many things around you 
you see many distractions around you. You see the naysayers around you. You see the peddlers of impossibilities all around you. You see the people that come to divert you from the Most High God all around you. But when you focus your attention, you focus your comprehension, you focus your faith on that one that says, Surely I will bring revival. And you endure. And you persevere. And you say, This is what I'm waiting for. And this is what I will have in my generation. Abraham. You are 99. And that sin has not come. Do you still have the hope? The expectation. Are you still going to obtain? You said God said it. I believe it. It will be done. In your life. In the church. God said it. I believe it. It shall be done. You are getting near 100. What if that thing does not come and then you die? Impossible. That will make God a liar. And God has said it. He will do it. At your own time. In our own time. That long awaited revival will come. Do you believe? First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 24. In First Thessalonians chapter 5. And in verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Not that he may, if, he, if he's happy, if he's sad, maybe he will consider. God is not affected by emotion of happiness or sadness. If Satan becomes weaker, maybe he will do it. God is not affected by the weakness of this or the strength of Satan. If the world becomes more civilized, Maybe God will do it. God is not affected by the civilization of any part of the world. Faithful is he that calleth you. Who also will do it. At your own time. In my own time. In this present generation. In your life, in your local church, in the national church, in the whole continent of Africa, beyond Africa, faithfully see that call it you who also will do it. Praise the Lord. We're living at the best time we could ever live. Obtaining, obtaining the all-sufficient faith for all solutions. We're coming to number two here. Number two, operating in Abraham's faith that will not stagger.
we have the faith it's not just to testify i have faith do something with that faith it is not to you know go to my friends and say you know what i had faith it's not talk 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 it's act 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 it's the action of faith don't talk about it do something with that don't go around talking 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 if the faith is there let your action show and anywhere you go you preach not on the basis of unbelief you preach on the basis of faith of preaching in abraham's faith the faith that will not stagger hey, look at romans chapter 4 reading from verse 17 as it is reaching i have made thee a father of many nations father of many nations he didn't have a child yet you have to have isaac before you can have jacob before you can have the 12 sons of Jacob, before you can have the 12 tribes of uh, Israel, before you can have them scattered around all over the world, and before he had a child, the Lord said, I have made thee, not I will make thee, God counted it, has done already. Yeah, that's the kind of faith that Abraham had. That's the kind of faith he wants you to have. You see it before you see it. That's what the architects have. The land is vacant. The land is empty. And the kind of building and edifice they will have on the land, they see it before it is built. You see the future at the present time. That's what faith does. Faith creates it in your mind and faith draws it near to the present it says as it is written i have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even god who quickness the dead when you have this kind of faith of Abraham, you see all those dead uh, members of the local church. You see them coming alive. You see all those dead uh, in the community. Spiritually, they are dead. They do not have any sense of spiritual things. And you look at the vast number of those who are dead spiritually. And then you say, I believe in the God that quickens the dead. And he called it those things would be not as though they were. Many people speak on the basis of the experience of the past. And they base their expectation on the past. 
And the past we are talking about is the recent past. The condition of my parents in the recent past. The condition of the previous uh, pastor in the previous recent past. The achievement of my teachers in the recent past. They base their expectation on that. But it says Abraham believed in the God that called it those things would be not as though they were. If Enoch based his expectation on the things and the people of the recent past, he will not have the rapture. If Elijah based his expectation of what had happened in the past, he will not say, Ahab, listen to me, according to my word, there shall be no dew nor rain these years according to my word. If they base their expectation on the recent past, nothing like that would have happened. If Isaiah based his expectation on the past, he will not courageously say, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Never. He was looking at the future and at the God that can make all impossibilities possible. Calling those things will be not as though they were. And then in verse 18, who against hope believed in hope. When everything was hopeless, he was hopeful. When everybody around was hopeless, he was hopeful when all the members of his family, when he said, it's gone. Your chance is gone. Hopeless. He was hopeful. When all the churches are hopeless, things are going down, revival will never come, the days of miracles are over, People don't get converted anymore. They can come to any meeting. The lives don't change anymore. When everybody is hopeless. And they say, no revival can come again. They are fasted, they had prayed. And nothing happened. The man that has Abraham's faith is hopeful. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become. The people who think the way I am now, as old as, as I am now, nothing will change again. They say when you reach 40, no new thing can happen. The brain is dead. The mind is stupefied. And so nothing new can come again. But that he might become the father of many nations. If you have that hope today, that faith today, you will become what has never happened in your life. Amen. You say, I've been sleeping, I'm waking up. I've been stupefied and dull, 
but I am waking up. You say there is something in me that had been asleep for a long time, but I am going to become what I had never been. That's the faith. That's the faith. That's the faith for this latter day revival. That he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken. I'm asking you a question. Have you received according to all that God Christ had spoken? Have you received? Has he performed? A virgin shall conceive? Isaiah said that from God. Nobody thought about it. Years passed. Nobody thought about it. Until there was a Mary the virgin. And all the promises God had given. Nobody is thinking about that. We're preaching regular preaching. We're praying regular prayer. We're hoping for regular hope. And we're meditating on regular meditation. Until somebody will take the challenge and think afresh and hope afresh and receive afresh and do afresh what had never been done and he wants to base his life his expectation he wants to base his ministry on that which god has spoken so shall thy seed be so shall thy ministry be so shall thy operation be look at verse 19 in verse 19 and be not weak in faith what did abraham have that many of us do not have he had shelter we have shelter he had religion we have religion he had a wife, we have wives. He had no child at that time, maybe many of us. Some of us do not have children too. He had a great name in his society. Maybe we have great names too. But the one thing he had, which we ought to have, which we must have, if we're going to bring back the good old days with God, it's the faith that will not stagger. And be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. He felt his nerves. They're weak. He observed his body. All the organs that should to function before, dead. And yet, he will not look at that. He looked at himself. He was walking slower, slower than he did before. The natural parts of him were going dead. But something, something, something in him that will not allow the dead natural to affect him or his hope or his expectation, the faith that will not stagger. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. 
when he was about 100 years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb what if you have a prayer partner is weak you're weak is weak and you are weak what if you have a prayer partner and his expectation is going down like your expectation is going down what if you have a partner that is too sweet and you look at the sea before you and as you are swimming and swimming you are getting tired and more tired and your partner Hoko, is also swimming with you who should a kind of bear you up is as weak as you are and you look at the shore before you and you say can we ever reach there you ask your partner can we ever get there and he says the way i feel in my body i don't think we will reach at such a time the face that will not stagger that will get you to the shore when every natural scene fails in the faith that will not stagger that will get you through look at verse 20 there in verse 20 he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief as God promised a revival for the latter days and everything we see around is trying to say don't, don't bother yourself the world is going bad worse worse and you're still expecting a revival of spiritual things don't worry yourself of course you must keep on praying because there is a faith that will not stagger He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He was strong. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. The body was telling a different story. His mind, his heart was telling a brighter story. giving glory to God the Jericho walls are telling a, a different story it's the gateway into the land of promise it's the gateway into the supernatural into the possession that God had promised them And those Jericho walls were telling a story. The walls have a strong foundation. Even the weapons of war cannot push them down. They're so thick, they're so deep. They're so high, they're so broad. Even chariots can go on them. And the children of Israel went round the first day. And the Jericho was told them the story. We're standing, we keep standing here. They went around the second time. And the Jericho walls were telling the story. Where is strong barrier, we will not let you in. Their faith was telling a different story. Their faith was talking to the Jericho was, you will calm down. Yeah. 
the world in which we minister. The people we're ministering to, they're telling us a story. They're saying there is a wall of demarcation. Preach. Pray. Prophesy. We are where we are. We go around once. They say nothing has been done or stand as we always stood. Our faith tells them another story. All the walls before you must come down. <laughs> Giving glory to God. The seventh day, they went around. The walls were still there. Giving glory to God. They shouted the hallelujah, the greatest hallelujah they ever shouted since they came out of Egypt and the walls came down flat. That the faith we have today. All the walls that stand between us and the revival, all these walls will collapse and come down. But we give on, we we'll keep on giving glory to God. I wake up in the morning and I say, Praise the Lord, the revival is nearby. I go about in the afternoon. And I see people doing what they have always done. And I see the wall still standing there. And I say, praise the Lord. The revival is nearer, much nearer than before. I want to sleep at night. I say, praise the Lord today. Because I see with the eyes of faith. That, that long-awaited revival is here now. At the next, and the next meeting you have, you see walls breaking down. Walls going down. What you have praised the Lord for? Realization has now come. In your life. In your family, in your local church, in our country here, everywhere but you, the revival has come. Look at verse 21. I'm being fully persuaded. No shadow of doubt. No shade of doubt. There is no iota, a little kind of speck of any doubt. I'm being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. You connect two words in your mind. Promise. Performance. Promise, performance. Promise, performance. Did I hear him promise? I will see him perform. Performance in your life. Performance in your ministry. He promised. He performs I rejoice with you if I were to come to you there I will shake your hand performance 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 why are you shake my hand performance in your life 
We're coming to number three now. Obeying through abiding faith without stumbling. Obeying through faith. You see, when we talk of obedience, people say, I praise God. I don't steal. I obey God. I praise God. I don't have covetousness. I obey God. Hold on. This man came to Christ and he said, My servant lies home sick, about to die. Please come very quickly before my son will die. And Jesus said, Go back home. Your son lives. There are people that will say, there, Jesus, what I said is calm. <inaudible> Obey. <inaudible> yes, I am obeying. <inaudible> I don't steal. <inaudible> I don't do this, I don't do that. <inaudible> I obey. <inaudible> uh -uh. <inaudible> Go back home. <inaudible> He's not going to physically follow you. If you believe he's the creator, he's the redeemer, and he sent the word and he healed them, he's giving you the word, go back home. And the man obeyed. And he went, he was going back home. And his servants came and met him. They were not there when Jesus spoke. But they said the same thing. They said, Master, your son liveth. The man was, the man was inquisitive. At what hour did my son leave? They said, yesterday at this hour. When Jesus spoke and he obeyed, that brought the extraordinary into his family. That's the obedience we are talking about. Here is the Red Sea. And the Egyptians were behind them. And they wanted to just cramp on them, swallow them up, destroy them. And God told Moses, tell them, go forward. Go forward. Look at the Egyptians. Look at the mountains. Look at the sea. When you refuse to see the natural, and you listen to the voice from on high. And then he said, Moses, stretch your rod. I don't smite the Red Sea. No, no. Just stretch it like that. I don't touch the Red Sea. No, no, no. Stretch your rod. When you obey that. And science will not tell you if you want to part the Red Sea. If you want to go over the sea, stretch your rod. They will say, build a bridge. They didn't have the material to build any bridge. If they, if they had the material, they were building the bridge before they even set the foundation of the bridge. The Egyptians were come over them and were taking them away. When God speaks, He speaks beyond the natural. He speaks beyond the physical. 
and you are the one to do what he says to do. God always tells us what we can do. Straight there on, we can do that. When we do what we can do, he will do what only he can do. And so, as Moses obeyed, can you think about this? All the children of Israel, the men and the women and the children, they all obeyed and they went through as long as in obedience they were going through the sea remained parted and gave them a way to walk through they went through i am going through i i am going through Egyptians all around I am going through the Red Sea here the Red Sea here I'm going through you are going through and you are going to be another step nearer to the promised land that the faith that will not look at the sea, that will not look at the storm, that will not look at the soldiers of Egypt, that will not look at anything beside God. That's why I invite you this morning that now in your heart, a new faith, the faith that will not stagger, a new faith that the faith that will not stumble, a new faith, the faith that will not shake, that the Lord is calling you to, a new faith that will expect the long awaited revival, that everything dull, everything dormant will wake up in your heart, in your life today. That will say, yes, Lord, I arise. Yes, Lord, I come. I'm now going to start a new journey. A new approach. A new lifestyle. A life of the faith that cannot be destroyed. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Why don't you rise up and say, Lord, a new journey, a new faith. And I'm going on now with this faith that will not stagger. Call upon the Lord. Forget everything around you. Forget your past. Forget all your unbelief of the past. All the wavering of the past, all the stumbling of the past, all the unbelief of the past, all the hopelessness of the past. And say, Lord, I arise. Lord, I arise. Lord, I arise. A new day, a new expectation, a new revival, revival in my soul. Revival in my heart. Revival in my family. Revival in my local church. Revival in restoration of what Moses did. A restoration of the life of faith of Joshua. A restoration of the life of Ezekiel. Another Elijah rising up there today. Another Elisha rising up there today. Another man. Another woman. With a new strength. With a new expectation. With a new faith. Look away from the past. 
look away from the presage and let your eyes see the revival coming upon your soul the change of life coming upon your soul a new expectation a new realization a new power a new promise a new performance in your life tell the lord tell the lord let's get away from the past let's come on to the new something you have never done you will do somewhere you have never gone you will go something you have never achieved you will achieve faith faith obtaining the faith receiving the faith exercising the faith living by faith praying by faith hoping by faith expecting by faith doing by faith obtain that faith obtain that faith is the all sufficient faith above all taking the shield of faith that she may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked faith will see you through faith will see you through new power new performance new energy a new ability will come unto you by faith by faith by faith and you operate operate in abraham's faith don't operate in unbelief when you operate in faith you bring god to partnership impossibilities become possible you will live by power faith and power faith and action faith and ability faith and possibilities impossible will become possible by faith by faith by faith you operate in the faith of abraham and there's no hopeless situation before the faith of abraham there's no powerless situation before the faith of abraham by faith by faith by faith you'll achieve what you have never achieved by faith you will climb the mountain you have never climbed by faith you will possess the territories you have never possessed by faith power by faith achievement by faith accomplishment by faith strength by faith health by faith possibilities will come in your life operate act exercise manifest abraham's faith that will not stagger now obey obey a new commandment rise up obey get up obey move on obey command obey heal the sick obey deliver the oppressed obey preach the gospel obey obey by faith great things are before you great strides are before you it's a new day a day of faith a day of obeying the lord by faith you'll be another man you'll be another woman 
you'll be a new creation, a renewed minister, a renewed woman minister, a renewed evangelist, a renewed pastor, a renewed professional. Now you are going to lay beyond the way you have ever lived in your life. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, face the impossible. Do the undoable. Achieve the unachievable. Conquer the unconquerable. By faith. In Jesus' name we pray. At this very moment, the power you did not have before, you have. The hope the expectation you never had before, now you have. The tiredness of yesterday is gone. The failure of yesterday is gone. A new man, a new woman, a new minister, a new professional. Everything, everything you read about in the Bible and you wondered, everything is coming into your life. Raise up your hand. That hand is different from that of yesterday. Lift up your heart to the Lord. That heart of today is different from that heart of yesterday. I praise the Lord for you. The Jericho walls of the past they collapse before you right now. Keep that hand up. Father, we well, thank you for a new day. Thank you, Lord, for a new destiny. Thank you, Lord, for every man, every woman, every brother, every sister, every minister, every professional here. We pray you wipe out the past in Jesus' name. Forgive the failure of the past. Touch everyone with new grace, new strength, new power, 
new vision, new focus, new consecration, and new achievement in Jesus' name. Turn everyone to become another man, another woman. Bring new strength in every life. New faith in every life. New power in every life. New performance in every life. Let this be an army of champions. An army of irresistible soldiers for Christ. Make everyone stronger than their circumstances. Make everyone greater than all their enemies. And as we live here today, we scatter, we go everywhere. The world, the world will clear out of the way for the giants coming. Confirm it in every life. New power from inside. New energy from inside. New fire power from inside. Make everyone more than a conqueror. Confirm each in every life. It is done. In your life. It is done. In my life, it is done for everyone everywhere. Say, Fair or not, Jesus. Accomplish in every life. In Jesus' name, we pray.